What's up traders, Andrew O'Connell here with Pristine Capital. Welcome to your market recap video. It is August 30th of 2022. We have one more day left in the month team and we actually have a pretty beautiful setup that is brewing. So let's check it out. Let's go through the indices and we will cover everything that happened in today's market action. S&P 500 finished the day down 1.1%. We had our NASDAQ QQQ finishing down 1.11%. Another horrible day for the indices. IWM down 1.4%. Our dogs of the Dow were lagging to the downside, only down 0.95%. And our ARK Innovation ETF, silent but deadly, only down 0.52%. Isn't that interesting? The most risk on and the most duration sensitive out of all of these ended up finishing down the least. And it also ended up finishing out at the highest point within its day's range. Volatility, you would expect that it would expand, right? Well, we basically finished out with flat volatility via the VIX. NASDAQ volatility actually declined. Dow volatility declined. Small caps up a smidge. So that is a bullish divergence. And then our breadth was pretty washout. We had 19% advancers in the small caps. We had 18.5% of volume. And the trend model remains at a negative three reading. Finviz heat map. Energy stocks got hit today, surprisingly. And this is... The main issue I see a lot of traders having is we're in a bear market, right? The Fed is tightening monetary policy. So I think everyone, I see this on Twitter especially, you know, everyone wants to be a breakout trader because I think most traders on FinTwit, I think they were birthed like in 2020 and trading breakouts like really worked in 2020. Like trading breakouts, I think is like the most like macho cool way to trade. But in a bear market, is trading breakouts really going to be like your best course of action? Not really. The best course of action has been buying at lower pivots and then selling into breakouts or at least taking a target into a breakout. Maybe you get something on it. But with these energy stocks, like for instance, like Oxy. Oxy had had like a 20% run in two weeks or like a week off that Warren Buffett news. And I noticed like there were a lot of traders like in our group, we were on top of those energy names. I caught you know a small trade in there, and I think other people in our group were actually like still in some of those trades and doing really well. But I noticed like on FinTwit, it's like people always want to chase the group after it moves like 20% a week. And again, if you're in a raging bull market, that makes a lot of sense. In a bear market, not as much sense. But we can see that pretty much across the board, it was a bloodbath, right? We had Apple down, NVIDIA, Tesla, the whole nine yards, sectors. Yeah, pretty much weakness across the board. European financials were the only group that finished out positive. And let's look at the day's range. What we'll closed at the upper end of the range? I see regional banks closed about halfway through their day's range. What else? I see software actually. So that is actually very interesting. We had, remember we saw ARK Innovation ETF had a pretty decent performance relatively speaking. And software also almost closed in the green, only down 0.21%. Definitely some groups to watch for tomorrow. Style factors. We saw the momentum style factor finish down 1.57%. And I remember seeing these over the past couple of days, everyone on Twitter saying like, well, the markets are down, but these five stocks are still trading up. So that means, you know, this is a bullish scenario or whatever. And yeah, we can see that, you know, if you see every other stock selling off, but you can pick out like a few that are not, Usually it's not really like the most low risk entry to be like buying all those names and like, oh, they're going to buck the entire trend of the market. Typically it doesn't really work that way. So we can see that group really got hit. Uh, the small cap value also got hit in a sea of red action. Now I do want to point out, this is our total put to call ratio. So right now I'm sounding kind of negative, but look at this. So total put to call ratio, this thing really spiked. This was not even today. This was yesterday. I would imagine that, you know, there were probably a lot of players that were just puking their guts up, panicking. Oh my gosh, I've been bullish this whole time, but now I can see the error of my ways. I've turned bearish. Now time to short everything. And yeah, we can see this is just super, super elevated. I would imagine we're going to get another pretty elevated reading today. So we're getting a good contrarian buy signal from this total puts call ratio. S&P 500, let's assess the damage team. So I drew these two downward trend lines right here. And this is day 10 of downside. 
So again, like we were super bearish over here. We were loading the boat, going nuclear short. And you can see that in our past recap videos. And yeah, you know, we've been pretty much riding this whole thing to the short side. Uh, and then started covering those shorts, you know, into this severe weakness. I covered the last of our shorts yesterday. And so today was our first day where we had some net long exposure. And take a look at the S&P 500. We did end up having a red day. We closed below the 50-day simple moving average. That is a big indicator. And a lot of the just like, you know, one-dimensional chart players are going to be like, well, now I'm going to flip bearish because we're below the 50-day simple moving average. You can see we also tested this top of the monthly value where you have right around 39.55 spot 25. The level that we were really looking for today either hitting that 39.55, which we really did not. We just got so darn close to it. The next level we were watching for was 3,900, which corresponds to about 390 on SPY. Those, in my opinion, are really good levels to add some long exposure to play for that counter trend, you know, oversold bounce. But you can see we are still below all these key moving averages. Let's take a look at the hourly chart. So I would love if we just got like one more flush lower tomorrow, just like clean out all the excess, get everyone into these poor location shorts. That would be great. Although it already looks like we might be trapping some players down here. Because look at this. We spent most of the day, like the big sell-off in terms of like the price move happened between nine, between nine and 11 o'clock. But then from 11 o'clock on, we pretty much consolidated in a range, right? And we put in two long lower wicks on these candles. And now we're pretty much trading almost above where I'm sure a lot of people sold their stocks this morning. So we'll have to see. I think we could just gap above these players and go. But if we get another just like capitulation washout tomorrow, you know, that's where I'd want to be adding to some long positions. So we shall see. Let's take a look. What else do we have? The NASDAQ. What's the NASDAQ doing? NASDAQ is down a little bit in the after hours. We are also below the 50 day simple moving average and we pulled into this monthly value area, Russell 2000. Have we tested the 50 day yet? Yup. Yeah, we returned to the 50 day simple moving average team. And we were pointing out remember when this thing started going parabolic and everyone was getting super excited about the parabola? That was the time to get cautious. Now, in my opinion, as we're testing the 50 day, I mean, I'm not saying like, oh, go aggressively long or anything, but I think now's the time to really be like exploring, you know, bounce trades. If you're a tactical trader, if you're not, then you really should just be staying out of the way of this market action. Dow Jones also down today, and we are below that 50 day simple moving average. So this is really interesting. Again, those chart players that are playing in 2D, they are going to be saying, oh, we're below the 50-day. That's a problem. Can't be long below that 50-day. Dollar index, this is still incredibly precarious. We are just consolidating. There's no indication yet that this is going to result to the downside or the upside. So it's still a big curveball. We have our treasuries, which ended up closing out flat. So this was neither good nor bad. I mean, we put in a doji candle and we are below this monthly value where these treasuries, they are definitely in trouble. And let's see what our crude oil did. Crude oil ended up finishing the day down. So this is actually a good thing uh, because yeah, it was not a good look seeing crude just like ripping into value. We got a breakdown. A lot of these energy names really just broke down today. Like, uh, you know, Oxy, this one that we traded oxy actually i don't even want to say break down just pulled back to the 10 day ema so nothing too bad about that but there are other names like i saw this like btu peabody energy pulled all the way back to the 20 day simple moving average we do have ccj that looked pretty good today ccj yeah look at this wow actually ended up finishing out positive after pulling back to the five day ema this stock is definitely doing something different and typically i don't go through many charts on these videos if you like if you like this part of the video where I'm just flipping through some charts, spitballing ideas, leave a comment below and I'll continue to include this. Because it's a fine balance between making the video like too long and uh, not including enough good content for you guys. 
So we got CCJ. One name that I'll be watching for tomorrow's session is this name, Wolf. And Wolf is, you know, could barely even pull back to the 10 day EMA. Looks very, very solid. And yeah, pulling back on low volume as well. So it looks pretty good. One name that really blew up today was PLAB. Look at this one. Oh my gosh, PLAB. What have they done to my boy? Look at this stock. I remember trading this one back in the day. I forget if I was able to get this for a winner or stopped out of it or whatever, but it's a pretty high flying stock. And yeah, it just completely gave up the ghost today. This thing, you know, not looking good at all. And it is good to see that some of these players, they're getting washed out, washed up. Celsius remains pretty strong. Another good looking name, pulling back to the 20 day simple moving average. But let's take a look. We'll pull up some of my trades for today. What did we actually do for today's session? So in terms of trades, first thing that I did today at 945, I stopped out of my DQ common shares for $67.17. I had paid $70.11 for those. The stock just didn't really look too great. Even when I entered it, you know, from day one, it just didn't really do what I wanted it to do. So closed it out. And I'm glad that I did. This ended up finishing out maybe like 3% below where, you know, my stop was. And I would have ended up having to take a stop anyway. So yeah, this one had a really nice high volume candle. Definitely one to keep watching. But again, talking about buying at the lower pivots being better, I bought call options on this down here. And the call options are still working. They're still green, looking solid. I'm still long those. But I tried to average up into the stock on yesterday's candle. And yeah, it obviously didn't work. So it just goes to show in this more challenging environment, getting those low pivots can work very well compared to you know trying to play for a breakout. So that was DQ. And again, like it's good if you can minimize the damage that you're taking. Like we had a huge win streak in our trade and we went for we went like 26 trades straight without taking a loss. And so now over the past 2 days my win rate has fallen. I always flag whenever my win rate on my last 5 trades falls below 50%, I always flag that. I want to make sure that I don't start being more aggressive in my trading. I'm really just very calculated when that happens. But it is important if you have a big 26 trade win streak and you're just hitting very nice sized winners and then you start going like 50 50 again but you're keeping your losses very controlled you're still making good progress in your trading and so that's really my goal is like hey if we enter a little bit more of a difficult period my win rate's going to fall so long as i'm managing my risk once we get into that really good nice setup that's where I know like I can make you know some really nice returns pretty quickly. And it's all about just having that confidence and knowing like when that time comes, when that A plus setup comes, we're gonna crush this. That's the most important thing for you to think about in your trading. Uh, what else did we do? Closed out TLT. We had some January calls. I closed those out for a scratch. Honestly, just didn't feel any conviction, wanted to pull the risk in. Um, what else did we do? I took a shot on some spy calls at 11.02. I got the October 397 calls for 1520. And uh, yeah, ended up adding a little bit to that and made my cost $15.14. I sold some put options in array. The stock looks fantastic. And I bought some call options in GFS. Let's take a quick look at array and GFS. Array. And this is a good trade where, you know, even if the stock isn't like super, super strong or anything, you know, you might be able to collect like a nice little base hit winner if the market doesn't slip into the abyss. So for this one, I sold again that 20 strike. So we'll see what happens. And then GFS, this was a name that one of our members called out. Check out GFS. This one, yeah, we've been watching this name for like a couple of weeks and just kind of patiently waiting for an entry. And honestly, what better an entry point? We pulled back to the 20 day simple moving average and we saw some buyers step in and support this stock today. It closed green while the market was red. It's exactly what we want to see. So yeah, I took the 65 strike calls in GFS. They expire in January. If we get a move up to the top end of this range, that'll be pretty much like right in line with that 65 strike. So that's really all we did today. Luckily we were able to sidestep a lot of the downside in the market 
So we're still doing okay. We're still doing fine. And now, honestly, it's all about just stalking what could be a very good bounce trade to the long side in equities. So definitely stay tuned. Looking forward to chatting with you all tomorrow. You guys are awesome. 